So one of the challenges a leader has is how do we support our people and make sure they know they have our full trust to develop themselves, grow themselves and take on really hard tasks and not be afraid, afraid to fail and know that they're supported regardless. So I'd like to tell you a story about someone that I helped with that when I was in the army. So when I was the operations officer of a communications unit in the Australian Army, uh, I used to take guys out rock climbing. It was fantastic. Uh, we'd go out for sport during the week, we'd go on trips on the weekend, much to my wife's disgust, who I was never at home, I was always out with the boys. Wasn't drinking, but we were rock climbing, it was great. And a lot of the guys there were a bit scared of it because rock climbing can be quite scary. And there was one guy in the team that we took out, I saw this uh, ability in him, uh, maybe it was a gut feel that I had this feeling that he could achieve great things. Um, he came out, I encouraged him to take on the really hard climbs and take on a leadership role in our climbing activities, um, which he did. And uh, he really took to it really well. Um, over time, he knew I was supporting him, I was trusting him, I would let him run activities. And if he didn't achieve them exactly the way they were supposed to be done, it didn't matter. Um, the rest of the team then started supporting him as one of the junior leaders in the team. And over the year, we passed on higher duties to him. So he got given other responsibilities uh, that weren't in accordance with his rank. And he did a great job. Towards the end of the year, he came to me and told me he was interested in going on the SAS selection training course, which is one of the hardest military courses in the world. And the whole unit got behind him. He, we, we all trusted that he had the skills and the ability and the mental toughness to do this. So we supported him and he made a commitment, a personal commitment to me as well, that he would try his best because as one of the officers, we sort of have to vouch for people that go on this training and support them through that process. I then went to Cambodia for nine months on operational service. And while I was there, I got a letter and I really remember the day I got the letter. It was a handwritten letter because in those days not many people had computers. And it was a letter from this young soldier who had completed the SAS selection course. He'd done his parachute training and his specialist training uh, in different areas. And he wrote to me telling me how during the selection course, which is very arduous, how that thought of making a commitment to me and the rest of the unit to not um, disgrace the unit, um, not that he ever would, but that's how people think when they go on these courses. Um, when it got really bad and really hard on the course, that he thought about that in the back of his mind and in his gut, and it made him push through those obstacles that he was facing and really get to the end of the course very, very successfully. So I think part of it is the trust that we gave him to be able to um, fail and not be criticised for that, but to learn from it. The, um, the respect we had for one another, and also importantly, that open commitment he made of what his goals were, and made that social, so made that aware to the unit and the team, and all of us, that helped drive him through. And I've, uh, I've kept that letter, and it's something I'll always remember, and we're still in contact, and uh, he's had a great career, and part of it was around that coaching and leadership we, we gave him and that we allowed him to make mistakes as he moved along on his path. So if you are a leader and you wanna inspire your people to be great leaders and take on things that you think are unachievable, give them trust, support them, and be okay with when they make a mistake because that's a natural part of learning to lead and grow.